What's up guys, Lon here from Android Authority and we're a little over halfway through the year and we've seen a lot of really great Android phones hit the market within the last six months or so and that's only going to continue with phones like the Note 8, the Pixel 2 and the LG V30. But until that happens, let's take a look back at the first half of the year and see what phones are the best Android phones of 2017 so far. Now before we get started, this list is in no particular order, but something to keep in mind with this best Android phones of 2017 list is that we'll be hitting the high end, middle and low end. So it's not limited to just flagships. Naturally flagships will make up a pretty big chunk of this list, but we'll be hitting a wide variety of price ranges as we go through this list. With that being said, kicking things off at number one is the Samsung Galaxy S8 slash S8 Plus. After the Note 7 debacle, it was important for Samsung to get things right, not only for themselves as one of the largest smartphone brands, but also to restore trust in consumers. The Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus brought all the latest and greatest specs that you would expect from a flagship, but what really made it stand out is its screen and design. Samsung has really refined their use of glass and metal, and the way the curved glass integrates into the metal frame feels completely smooth and seamless. Not only does it look great, but it feels extremely comfortable to hold. The screen is also incredible incredible to look at and arguably the best screen on a smartphone right now. The new aspect ratio combined with the super thin bezels on all sides makes the screen stand out and of course being an AMOLED screen you get those beautiful vibrant colors and deep dark blacks. Not only is it a beautiful looking phone with a great screen, it also has an excellent camera, good performance and comes with a lot of extra features like expandable storage, wireless charging and IP68 water and dust resistance making it one of the most well-rounded smartphones of 2017. Next up on the list is the LG G6, and the G6 really shows what a difference a year can really make. The G5 was a failed experiment, but with the G6, LG returned to a formula that works, and it certainly paid off. It was the first major phone of 2017 that featured this new 18 by 9 aspect ratio with thin bezels, and while it may not look quite as flashy sitting next to the S8, the screen is still fantastic. LG did a great job of taking advantage of this taller and narrow screen with their software, which also saw a lot of improvements in terms of being a cleaner and easier to use experience. It may not have shipped with the latest Snapdragon 835, but the performance has held up quite well and it offers some pretty excellent battery life. Depending on your region, you'll also get other nice features like a quad DAC or wireless charging. But the other main attraction to the G6 is the dual cameras on the back. It takes fantastic photos and the wide angle lens is a ton of fun to use. It makes it a lot easier to fit more into the frame and you can take some pretty breathtaking taking landscape shots. Our next phone comes from HTC with the U11. After the HTC U Ultra ultimately turned out to be a flop, HTC really needed to hit one out of the park and they totally did that with the U11. They didn't follow in the footsteps of Samsung and LG with the tall, narrow, and practically bezel-less screens, but this is still one gorgeous looking phone and comes in some very eye-catching colors and finishes. It was a phone that ultimately checked all the right boxes. It has fast performance, a clean software experience, exceptional battery life, and a camera that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Samsung and LG. It may not have a headphone jack, but the audio experience on the U11 is one of the best that you'll find on a smartphone right now. The external speakers are extremely crisp and loud, and the Usonic earbuds with active noise cancellation sound pretty incredible for a pair of earbuds. Every smartphone, of course, has at least one gimmick or defining feature, and the standout feature here with the U11 is EdgeSense. This is HTC's phone squeezing technology, and squeezing your phone to launch an app or a specific function may sound weird at first, but once you wrap your head around it, it feels surprisingly intuitive. The U11 is a phone that you definitely shouldn't overlook if you're on the lookout for a new smartphone. Another company attempting to make a comeback is BlackBerry with the BlackBerry Key One, and the Key One is arguably their keystone to mounting that comeback and restoring their image as a legitimate smartphone brand with the help of TCL. With the Key One, BlackBerry went back to what essentially makes a BlackBerry a BlackBerry. It has a full physical QWERTY keyboard, which we don't see on a lot of smartphones anymore. And aside from providing a physical typing experience, the keyboard also has a lot of extra functions. You can use it as a trackpad of sorts to swipe around or scroll through web pages and assign a wide variety of long and short press shortcuts. This makes it really great for getting in and out of things quickly and for productivity. And with BlackBerry's best in class security, you won't have to worry about any sensitive information you have stored on this phone. It may not be the 
fastest phone on the block, but with the Snapdragon 625 paired with a pretty hefty battery, this allows for some pretty long lasting battery life, which is definitely a must have for a phone that is meant for getting work done. It's not a phone made for everyone, especially if you're more into consuming media, but BlackBerry did a great job of creating a phone that appeals to old BlackBerry fans while also having the potential to bring in some new ones. If you're looking for a mid-range phone that is geared towards a wider audience, the Moto Z2 Play might be right up your alley. This phone may have gone up in price, but it's still a great mid-range phone, and you can get it for a much better deal on Verizon, both in terms of a lower price and a Moto Mod included for free while the deal lasts. It continues to do all the things that made the original Z Play so great. It has great build quality, a slimmer design, a long lasting battery, a near stock Android experience, and the Moto Mods is still one of the sleekest and elegant ways of making your phone more fun and functional. But what if you're looking for a super cheap budget phone? Well, it doesn't get any more budget than Motorola's other option, the Moto E4. Motorola has always done a great job with balancing performance and price. And with this phone being so cheap, it's almost a steal. It's $70 if you buy it from Verizon. And as an unlocked phone, that price does go up to 130 bucks, but that's still ridiculously affordable. For the money, you're getting a pretty decent phone with a quad core processor, two gigs of RAM, a five inch 720p display, Android 7.1.1 Nougat, an eight megapixel rear camera, a fairly hefty 2800 milliamp hour battery, a water repellent body, and it even comes with a fingerprint sensor. It's not exactly a phone that's going to blow your socks off, but it's a solid package overall, and with a price tag that isn't going to break the bank, it's hard to really complain. Rounding out this list, we have the OnePlus 5, and even though the price of the OnePlus has increased over time, it's still the best bang for the buck smartphone you can buy. The release of the OnePlus 5 certainly wasn't without its controversy, and some of the criticisms are well-deserved, but that doesn't mean the OnePlus 5 isn't a great phone. You'd be hard to find another phone that offers a better price to performance ratio, and you definitely get a lot of performance with the eight gigabytes of RAM and Snapdragon 835. Being offered at a lower price than most flagships does mean that this phone has a few shortcomings, but overall it competes really well. It has a great metal design, dual cameras, a clean stock-like Android experience with Oxygen OS, and charges insanely quickly with OnePlus's dash charging technology. It may not be the same impulse buy that it once was, but it's still the best flagship you can buy for a not so flagship price. And that completes our list of the best Android phones of 2017 so far. There's still a lot left in the year and plenty of great Android phones to be released. And we'll certainly update this list as that time comes. But what do you guys think of this list? Do you agree or disagree? Are there any other phones that you think should have made the cut? Let us know down in the comments section below. And as always, give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel, which is also down below if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. And check us out on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Google+, all that good stuff will be linked down below. And as always, check the website as well, androidauthority.com, because we are your source for all things Android.